Ave Maria. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not suppose I have come to bring peace to the earth. It is not peace that I have come to bring, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. Anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take up his cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. St. Peter tells us, if you have to suffer for being good, you should count it a blessing. There is no need, he says, to be afraid or to worry about persecutors. Simply reverence the Lord Jesus in your hearts. And certainly this is good advice for us because we tend to be afraid of persecution and we're fearful of persecutors. But if we're doing the correct thing, the right thing, the virtuous thing, we should expect to be opposed for the simple reason that our enemies do not like it. The enemies being the world, the flesh and the devil. Certainly the world objects to those who are virtuous and certainly the devil does not like it. And we ourselves, our flesh, doesn't like it either. So as we read in the book of Job, the life of man on earth is one of warfare and conflict. Our blessed Lord tells us that he did not come to bring peace on earth, though of course the angels sang glory to God in the highest and peace to people of goodwill. But our Lord said he didn't come to bring peace. No, he came, as he said, to bring division. Because there can, the true peace can only exist when we are faithful to God, when we know the will of God and we strive to fulfill the will of God in our lives. That is where peace comes. It is a deep peace that the Lord himself says the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. So it is in our relationship with God, first and foremost, that we have peace. And consequently, we will have opposition and we will find ourselves even persecuted. But as St. Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Our Lord has said he's come to set a man against his father, etc. And today's feast at the St. Wenceslas is a very good example of that. Wenceslas was the um, prince of Bohemia uh, sometime in the 10th century. He had uh, a brother um, by the name of Bosislav. Their father um, was a Christian and a devout man, a very devout king. But he had married a woman um, who was a pagan and what is more, had a hatred for Christians and Christianity. However, she hid it while her husband was, al was alive. But once her husband died, she immediately began to show her hatred for Christianity. The kingdom was divided between the two brothers. And in Bratislav's part of the country, there was an intense persecution against the church. Whereas Wenceslas, on the contrary, promoted the church. And he himself was uh, very, well, he's more than devout. He lived the life of a monastic monk. And he did all that he could to console the people who came to him because of the persecutions by his brother. He was, his, his sanctity was so well known that when the emperor 
called one of the diets, and he being a prince, he was obliged to attend. He was late. And this, of course, would have been regarded as an insult to the emperor. But why was he late? Because he had to stop to hear mass. And when he explained that to the emperor, the court was scandalized. But the emperor regarded that as such a, a, um, a, a pious thing to do. And as the emperor said, I am only the emperor, but there is a god above me. And he, he gave to Wenceslas a place of honor. Wenceslas, in his, um, in his sincerity, suspected evil of no one. And his brother invited him to um, a feast. And with all innocence, he went. And as he always did, he rose at midnight to pray. So rising at midnight, he went to the chapel and it was there that he was murdered in the church by his own brother. Immediately he was um, declared uh, a saint, not only because of his martyrdom, but above all because of the kind of life he lived. His life of virtue was the, the, the source of hatred by those who could not bear to hear the name of Christ. And so when our Lord says, I've come to set a man against his father, he's, he's essentially telling us that we should expect enmity even within those whom we hold dearest and closest to ourselves. Because faith, as St. Paul says, faith is not given to everyone. And so we who do believe, we must constantly pray for those who do not have faith, especially those within our own family circles. And Again, quote in St. Paul, we know that the believing spouse can be the salvation of the unbelieving spouse. And of course, the same applies for children as well as for, for parents. The one thing we must remember in all of this is that Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, is God. And this he demonstrates on so many occasions by the miracles that he works but above all, by what he teaches. And here we heard, if anyone prefers father or mother to me, he's not worthy of me. The question that should immediately spring to mind is, who, who can demand this of us? Who can say, if you prefer father or mother to me, you're not worthy of me? A husband cannot say that to his wife, nor a wife to a husband. This should be regarded as arrogance of the greatest kind. Only God can make such a demand of us. And he goes further. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Only God can make such a demand of us. And so he's telling us that even in our dearest and closest relationships, we must keep God's um, our affection, our love for God, uppermost and foremost. And in fact, it's only in this, it's only by loving God above all things that in fact we can truly love our neighbor as ourselves. In fact, it's only by loving God we can even love ourselves. For he says, anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Let us then ask that we, each and every one of us, will obtain from Christ our Lord in his great mercy the gift of perfect love for God so that we might love all those whom he has entrusted to our care and that we might be able to love even our enemies and those who persecute us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Santa Maria.